Hello, good morning, and good day wherever you are in the world. Thank you once again for joining ICC's online service Sunday today, as well uh, not only to Denmark, but also those of you who are watching from around the world. We've got a tremendous uh, uh, amount of things planned for today, and we just hope and pray that as you join us in this worship service, you will be blessed and that uh, the Lord will, of course, receive all the glory and the honor as always. So, let's first begin with a word of prayer, after which I'll give you a slight uh, a report on what we're going to do, after which we're going to go straight into a time of praise and worship. Some lovely things are in store for you this morning. Amen. So, let's now start with a word of prayer and ask the Lord's blessing upon this entire service and also those of you who are watching us from wherever in Denmark and around the world. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you so very much that you are always here in our midst. In fact, your word says when two or three are gathered together in your name, there you are in our midst. Thank you, God. Father, I also want to pray for those watching as well as those of us who are putting this together that you would bless each and every one in a very special way. We want to thank you, Lord, for your presence, especially those who are at home and who have felt uh, the pain and the the struggles of the lockdown, that you would be with them. You would encourage them. You lift them up, O God, that they will feel and sense your presence to be able to go through this very strange time, yet coming out of it shining and successful. So we praise you and we thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This morning, we have planned a very unusual service for you because in a little while's time, you're going to have Ayumi, even though we here are based in Denmark, Ayumi, who is in Japan, has actually prepared the praise and worship session for us to be able to join with her. And we're so thankful that she has been willing and available to help us. After which, I'll come back and uh, welcome a prince who will come and just lead us in prayer. We have been doing this every week just to pray for those who are both uh, affected, uh, infected, as well as uh, the slow opening up of the society, how it's going to go for the politicians as well as uh, all the first responders. Uh, Last but not least, Victoria will come. Uh, She's our board member. I'll introduce her to you later. And she's going to share with us a message that she has prepared. I believe it's about Joshua. I'm actually looking very much forward because she has uh, worked on this for a while. And I believe she has got a word, a timely word for us. And of course, I'll come back again after Victoria's preaching to make a couple of announcements before the benediction. Therefore, brothers and sisters and friends from Denmark and around the world, Stay with us through this wonderful service, and we want to continue to pray for God's blessings upon you. Right now, we are going to take you all the way to Japan (laughs) to join us for a time of praise and worship by our wonderful sister Ayumi. For those of you who don't know Ayumi, just a little bit of information. Her father was many years ago in Denmark as a uh, student in agriculture. And while he was a student in agriculture, he was invited to a state church out in Yulan. And from that experience and being invited to a cell group in that state church, he actually got hungry and thirsty about God. Went back to Japan, dropped agriculture, picked up theology, and became a pastor, believe it or not. And of course, uh, when his daughter Ayumi, uh, daughters as a matter of fact, first Ayumi and then her, her sister, when they were supposed to do some education in the area of music, he recommended strongly that they come to, to Denmark, of course. Why not? And so it was through that uh, connection that we got to know Ayumi, who uh, not only uh, was a member of our congregation, but when she went back to Japan, she joined Youth with a Mission, and she's been a missionary in different places, among others in India and so on. Ayumi has been so willing to uh, just uh, be a blessing to us always. When she comes to Denmark, she comes and she sings. She's also trained as a professional singer. So thank you, Ayumi. I know, I hope you are watching all the way from uh, Japan and that you would continue to uh, be blessed as you are a blessing to many. Thank you very much, and we will straight go to the time of praise and worship. Join us, please, as we worship the Lord. Good morning, ICC. This is Ayumi from Japan. It's such a privilege being together with you from Denmark, from all over the world. 
And thank you, Ravi and Lillian, for letting me be in part of ICC Sunday service. Heavenly Father, we just come before you right now, and we just want to praise you, and we just want to give you glory. We just want to lift our voice and say, Lord, you are the King. Even when the sun rose and ocean rise, you are the King, you are the center of everything. This morning we just want to declare, you are the center of everything. And your name is higher than any other thing. And your name is stronger, really, really stronger than any other thing, Lord.
Thank you so very much, Ayumi, for leading us into the presence of God. Um, we thank God for your gift and your talent and your willingness and availability to do this, uh, albeit from the oceans away. Thank God for your gift and we pray for God's blessings upon you. And thank you, everyone who watched. I'm pretty sure that the Lord has touched you as much as he has touched us. As I thank Ayumi, I also want to thank uh, our different crews uh, who has been helping uh, constantly uh, for all this time when we had to have these online services. A very, very special thanks, of course, to Ulf and Lillian, Prince and Josiah, but more than that, our volunteers who have come, uh, Michael in particular, who has been uh, here every single Sunday setting up the sound, and our different speakers like Victoria and uh, as well as... Lillian, then we also have, uh, of course, Andy, who had uh, helped us to lead in uh, praise and worship last Sunday, uh, Easter Sunday. Thank you, every single person, for what you've done. We also want to thank God for all that's going on around the world today uh, concerning this uh, lockdown period and the first responders, those infected, those affected. We've been praying for these people on a weekly basis. Of course, we also want to let you know that um, Denmark has started to slowly but surely uh, kind of slow down and, and release people back into the society, but in different stages. I know this is going on in different parts of the world in different ways, and uh, we just want to thank God for that. So what we want to do is uh, continue to pray, as we have been doing every single week for different people, and uh, we want to continue to do that also this Sunday. So this Sunday, I'm going to be asking Prince to help us to just lead in a little prayer before I come and introduce you to our guest speaker, which I'm looking very much forward to. So Prince, if you can be so kind, come and help us with prayers. Thank you. Greetings, my fellow ICC brothers and sisters. We can't say how thankful we are. We want to thank you that you are joining us during this time. It means a lot to us. And having said that, we want to lead you in a quick word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, during this crisis period, we want to pray for those who are infected with this incredibly contagious virus. We want to especially pray for the incredibly vulnerable people, the people with failing health, especially the more elderly. We pray that during this incredibly vulnerable time that you will protect them and you will put a shield around them so that they may not perish due to this disease. We want to pray for the first responders, those who are putting themselves on the front line, putting the crisis in front of their own well-being. We know that many people who are at the forefront, that they have fallen due to this virus. There are doctors, paramedics and nurses who are getting infected with this and they're doing it just so that they can help their own people. We pray for their safety. And we pray that through their sacrifice they will be remembered and that they will be appreciated as well. We pray for their safety. Along with that, we want to pray for those whose financial and economic status have been affected during this time. This crisis has affected many people's jobs. Many people have lost their jobs and their well-being because of this crisis. And we want to pray that in spite of the difficult times that they're going through, we pray that they will lift their heads towards you. They will lift their heads towards you and they will look to you first and know that as long as they only have you, they don't need to ever be in need, that by trusting you, you will provide everything. Because if they know in their hearts that this whole time everything came from you, why should it be any different in a time of crisis? And last but not least, we wanna pray for the leaders, the global leaders, who are having the single biggest impact on the fate of this entire world. We want to pray for a 
of course, the global leaders around in every country, whether it's the US, whether it's China. But we also want to especially pray for Denmark, who's thinking about starting to open the borders and to become more open. We pray that you'll give the global, you'll give the Denmark leaders wisdom during this time. You'll give them heavenly wisdom to handle this. At this point, they have handled it beautifully, especially in Denmark. And we pray that this time will not be a time where the cases will soar. We pray that it will be contained and that this will be a peaceful and a smooth opening. And again, we want to pray for the renewed protection of all people involved, especially kids who are going back to school and mingling with other kids and having the risk of spreading it to their family. We pray that you place a hedge of protection over all of these people. We want to thank you again for all you've done for us and we're trusting you through this entire crisis. We pray all of this in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Prince, for that uh, prayer. And we continue to stand with those who are in different parts of the world. In a few moments, Victoria is coming to share with us the Word of God. And for those of you who don't know who Victoria is, she is among uh, the board members of ICC. She has been a tremendous, tremendous uh, support and a blessing to the congregation. And of course, we thank God for her being here. Uh, along, uh, also thank God for her husband, uh, Torsten, who is right now with the two children at home, <laughs> and so that she can be released to come and share the word of God. Victoria, uh, of course, uh, among other things, I just thought she mentioned one thing about her. She has not only been a, a member of the board, but there was a season in her life where she was involved in a humanitarian organization in Angola, out of all places in the world, believe it or not. And uh, she has a heart for uh, missions. She's always had a heart for missions. And we're just thankful uh, that she has been a wonderful, wonderful support to the congregation. So, brothers and sisters, without any more delay, I'm going to hand this platform over to Victoria, who is going to share with us the Word of God. Thank you so much, Victoria. Please, you're very welcome. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, thank you, Ravi. Good morning. As Ravi mentioned, my name is Victoria. And um, as I was asked to, uh, to preach at ICC, uh, the first thought that came to my mind was actually the book of Yasha. And now Ravi mentioned Angola. And during that stay, the book of Yasha really was uh, an encouragement for me throughout that year. God really encouraged me, lifted me up, and uh, blessed me throughout this year. But uh, so this morning, I would like to uh, the, give the title of, of my word that I'm going to share with you, the process of taking back our inheritance. So many years after Angola, now I've been um, um, reading the first chapter, meditating, and those are the thoughts that I would like to share with you this morning. And the will inheritance, I mean the material and spiritual blessings that God provides for his people. So uh, first I would like to um, give a uh, and a historical background of what Joshua went through before coming to this point. So after Moses passed away, God tells Joshua to get ready to take the promised land. Joshua was, un was not unknown to the people because just after leaving Egypt, when Joshua was around 30 years old, he was given the responsibility to be the leader of the Israelites when they were for the Amalekites, that you can read more about in the book of Exodus chapter 17. He received the order from Moses. Moses was his leader. Um, and Joshua was also in charge of protecting the sacred place, the tent where Moses went into when he wanted to spend alone time with God. Uh, so when Moses went in, Joshua was already inside. Moses had his fellowship, fellowship time with God. He left to go back to the camp, and Joshua stay there to be a guard. So as you see, Joshua was not a stranger to areas of responsibility. Another experience that Joshua gained under the leadership of Moses was a spy. 
Remember when Moses and Joshua, Caleb, and ten other spies, uh, in order to receive a first-hand account of the conditions of the Promised Land? Um, when we recall how Caleb and Joshua uh, were positive about taking up the fight and conquer the land. Uh, but the people that time, they rebel against God. They were not satisfied. They, they wanted uh, to go back. So in chapter, I'm going to read from the book of uh, Numbers, chapter 14, verse 7 to 9, what happened. Joshua and Caleb, they say, the land we pass through and explore is exceedingly good. If the Lord is pleased with us, he will lead us into the land, a land flowing with milk and honey, and will give it to us. Only do not rebel against the Lord, and do not be afraid of the people of that land, because we will swallow them up. Their protection is gone, but the Lord is with us. Do not be afraid of them. These verses demonstrate Joshua's faith. He's aware that it all depends if the people has pleased the Lord, their attitude. He says, only do not rebel against the Lord. Joshua knows that the people, they have an attitude problem. The unknown can make you and me insecure. And when we face challenges, maybe our faith begins to shake. That is what, what happens here. Uh, but it's important to remember that when one goes through challenging times as a child of God, we are never alone. Joshua is convinced that the Lord is with them, that that is what his eyes, his focus is on, on God. He can see beyond the challenges. He sees the blessing. So this, was, this is the man that God was preparing for the task. Joshua possessed leadership experience as well as military skills to lead the Israelites into conquering Canaan. He was a competent successor to Moses. So this is was Joshua, what he has been experiencing until now. But, but what kind of land was Canaan? What challenge did God uh, have for Joshua? We have to understand that Canaan was not a state, a central government. Canaan was made of different city-states, each one of the largest cities uh, with the closest area of land was a kingdom with a city king. Egypt has, had encouraged this, de this development as it was easier to control and also another outcome was less political danger. So these cities, these, they were well structured, they had an effective drainage system, workers and craftsmen they were good to work with copper, lead, and gold. And the pottery produced in Canaan, it was the finest pottery of that time. So, and many trade, trade connections went through the land. So it was an area with a lot of commercial activity. It was a productive and developed land. So that is what we have. That is a challenge that Joshua has. And on the other hand, we have the Israelites. They were nomads. They had been living 40 years in the wilderness. It is a new generation of men that joined Joshua. Many of them were born in the desert. However, when God has a purpose, a plan, nobody can stop it. God will equip you with the necessary skills to enter your promised land. He will have Joshua. Here we have Joshua who is willing and obedient. So do not be discouraged because... God does not care which background you have or which package you bring with you. If he says, go, you go. If he says, move, you move. It is important to remember that you have to know the voice of your father in order to listen and be obedient. And you might ask, how? How do I know when God is talking to me? Well, I would like to give an example because I'm the mother of two children, and especially my youngest one, she knows when I say no, she has a hearing loss. Then I say no, then mm, I, my, she might look up. And when she says, now you stop right now, she knows what it means. That if she doesn't stop right now, she will be going into, sent into her room. 
She knows me. We've been spending the past four and a half years together since I gave birth to her. She knows me. I know her. She knows my voice. I know her, her posture, how she beha- when she's behaving, what she has, is thinking, because we spend time together. And so another little story that happened yesterday. She came to me and said, Mommy, I'm hungry. And I said, Oh, I looked, at my, I looked at the hour, what time it was, and I said, oh, would you like a banana? And she said, mommy, how come you know what I like? It's because I'm your mother. And then I was thinking, I'm your mother, I know. I spend time with her, so I know what she likes. And I know what is good for her at what time. It was no time for sweets just before dinner. And that's the same way with God. We have to, we have to spend time with him in order to know his voice. So now we come to chapter 1, when God talks to Joshua, in the book of Joshua, chapter 1, from verse 1 to 9. Joshua gets instructions from God. Until now, Joshua has been mentioned as the assistant of Moses. Now now God tells Joshua to get ready to take over that land. In verse 3, God says, I will give you every place you set your foot as I promised Moses, God is asking Joshua to do it by faith. If you don't move, you, you only be observing from a distance. You can only see your blessings from a distance. You have to move. Remember the spies with Joshua, uh, with, which Moses sent to Canaan uh, back in history? They were afraid. They had no faith. They actually wanted a new leader who could take them back to Egypt because they knew their, 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 their lives as slaves. They rather had that, that meeting a new challenge, walk forward, and see what has God for me. So God, he encourages Joshua three times in, the, the first, in Joshua's book, the first chapter. I would like to read a couple of verses because God, he says in verse 6, be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to the forefathers to give them. So then in verse 7, God says to, Moses, uh, to Joshua, sorry, be strong and courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave to you. Do not turn it from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. And then God in verse um, 9, he says, Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God, your God will be with you wherever you go. So first, God encourages Moses, uh, sorry, Joshua, And then he comes with a verb, with an action. We are not to remain still or passive, but we have to move, walk forward. So now God wishes to execute his plan using Joshua. Important to remember the process that Joshua has been going through before coming to this point. Joshua has been preparing for this task since he left Egypt, together with Moses. We know We have to know that no circumstances in our life is a coincidence. God is preparing and challenging each one of us constantly on a daily basis. We might not always enjoy the situation. However, if we use to include God in the good and the less good times, we, the children of God, always seem to get up again and continue our walk. We know our Father is joining us and that we are not alone. That's the difference. So after God has encouraged Joshua, Joshua from verse 10, he goes to the people and now he talks to the people. Joshua instructs the people now. So in verse 11 he says, get your supplies ready. Three days from now on, you will cross the Jordan here to go in and take possession of the land the Lord your God gives you for your own. So Joshua is very confident now and he relies on God's protection that God is with him. And the man 
What was their reaction? The men, they accepted Joshua's authority. In verse 17 and 18, they say, just as we fully obeyed Moses, so will we obey you. Only may the Lord your God be with you as he was with Moses. Whoever rebel against your word and does not obey your words will be put to death. Only be strong and courageous. They too encourage Joshua. This is a new generation of men. They know the history. They know how the forefathers rebel against God under the leadership of Moses. They do not wish to repeat the same mistake again. They are ready to take new ground. They are ready to follow the, the leader and they are ready to move forward. And so now uh, this word is short. So now I reach my conclusion. And as we sit back, we see the journey. We see Joshua from the time he left Egypt with Moses and until God instructs, instructs him. We see how he's prepared. We see how he's challenged, but his faith, he continues to <clears throat> get up and walk with God. Joshua encountered challenges and difficulties, but God equipped him and carried him through the tough times. So during the process, we children encounter, of God, we encounter several challenges. No matter where the situation are right now, we are all affected by this lockdown due to this coronavirus. And this lockdown has an impact in certain areas of in our, our lives. Maybe you're in between jobs to the current situation. Maybe you have a job and you're afraid of losing it. God can create new opportunities where you are right now. Maybe you have your own company and you are not sure if it will make it through the lockdown. Maybe to you students, we have heard how this lockdown has affected the exam situation. Maybe you are finishing high school and need those grades to be admitted to the program of your dreams. Trust God because he's in control. Many of you have, uh, maybe some of you have a delicate health, so it would be dangerous if you get this virus. Trust God. ICC is an international, international community, and I understand if you worry for your loved ones in your countries of origin. But God is taking care of them. So remember, it is not the outcome, but the process that is glorifying to God. How do we face these challenges? How do we face these challenging times? What is, a, what is our attitude? And we have seen how uh, Joshua enc encountered this, how God carried him through and helped him. And I've only been talking about the first chapter because this continues in many chapters. And I encourage you to go and to read it because it's, it's, it, would be a, it is a huge blessing. Um, but God is faithful and God saw Joshua, the attitude he had, his willingness, and he honored it. The same way he will honor you and the attitude you face these challenges with. I will say, read God's word and let God talk to you. Let God encourage you and spend time with him. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Victoria, for such a wonderful, wonderful, encouraging word concerning Joshua, and uh, what an eye-opener, again, to remember the words that was given to Joshua, to be strong and to be courageous as we are in a time like this. Thank God that Joshua received uh, instructions after the death of Moses, and he continued to follow the law, and uh, as a matter of fact, did great exploits. As Victoria said, I would also encourage you to read on uh, the things that God had brought about through Joshua's faith and obedience. And uh, also, if you continue to read on, you realize the generation following Joshua, um, there was a period where 
there was no more leader and there were just judges and everybody seemed to have done what is right in their own eyes. That was a sad part because of not following God. So we want to encourage everybody who is here and the encouragement that Victoria has just given us, even during this period of, so to speak, lockdown, you're not locked out of God. Amen. So once again, Victoria, thank you so much. And I believe that each one of you who were there were able to be blessed by this uh, wonderful, wonderful word. And we pray that the Lord will continue to be with you and strengthen you. Now, we're going to go on to the announcements. And this is uh, just after that, I'm going to be uh, sharing with you uh, the blessings, which I want to ask you to remain and, and stay for. But just before we go on to the announcements, I have... Uh, rather sad news uh, to bring on t uh, to those of you especially uh, who are very closely attached to ICC. Um, on Thursday, uh, we had a news from uh, Czech Republic. As you know, Carol and Darina, missionaries that we are supporting. Carol's firstborn son, uh, Thomas, uh, who used to be, of course, in Denmark and part of our congregation uh, in the before um, of course, uh, has uh, been married and uh, has a son, Christoph. His wife, uh, Marketa, had been having a long struggle with cancer, unfortunately. And uh, last, after a, a hard battle with cancer, last Thursday, she had uh, gone on to be with the Lord. And it was a very uh, difficult time uh, to get the information, let alone... Uh, it's a very difficult time for the family to go through. Our hearts and our prayers goes out to Thomas uh, Sedlasek and uh, his son Christoph, who is of course struggling with this news over this uh, difficult time, as well as uh, Carl and Darina, who are our missionaries. We just continue to pray and ask the Lord's blessing upon them as well. And for those of you who personally know uh, Thomas, uh, as he's known in, in um, Czech Republic, Tomashi, but uh, those of you who know him personally, of course, um, do keep him in prayers. And I don't think it's probably possible for him to respond to each and every one uh, who probably would like to text or call. But just keep him and the family in prayer. Um, yeah. Now we would like to also go to other announcements um, and uh, just uh, join me first uh, in a word of prayer before we go to uh, the tithe uh, and the offerings and the uh, pledges that you've made. Now, just before we pray, I, I think it's, it's um, yeah, I think it's appropriate to mention that uh, in a church, when the tithe and the offerings and all the other pledges that has been made is being collected, it is not a donation. It's very important to understand that it's an act of worship. And this, just as the praise and worship, uh, when the praise is going on and, the, and, the, and we worship the Lord also with the word, likewise, when we bring our substance back to him, it is an act of worship. I think uh, sometimes it's easy to just uh, let it slip our mind and, and consider the church like uh, as an organization uh, where you bring about a donation. It's not a donation, it's a part of worship. That is why we pray for our tithes, uh, the offerings and pledges that you've made. It's because it's another aspect of worship. So join me first in prayer for that, after which we will also uh, make some announcements, very little announcements. Father, we want to thank you that uh, we have had time uh, to praise you in your presence. Thank you that we have had time to listen to your word being expounded and explored concerning being strong and courageous as you would lead us, as you did Joshua. Now, Lord, we also want to take time to worship you with our substance, especially in times when you've always been faithful to us. Help us to remember our commitments to you as the tithe which belongs to you and the offerings which you deserve. So we would like to ask uh, your blessings in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Now, in a little while's time, Ulf will be playing a uh, video, but just before he does that, we want to let you know that uh, you probably have it on your screens. There are three different ways in which you can participate in ICC in terms of your uh, payments of your tithe and giving of your offerings and fulfillment of your pledges, uh, missions pledge or New Year's pledge. And the first form in which you can do it is through credit card. When we had a gathering together, we used to have a credit card terminal at the back, but now we have taken that terminal and we have put that terminal in our homepage. 
even in your mobile devices. So you don't have to go to the terminal anymore, albeit when church reopens, we'll have it. But right now, you actually have the uh, credit card terminal in your mobile device. When you go into ICC's homepage, there you go. You are able to, from around the world, not just from Denmark, you can uh, go ahead and uh, uh, be a part of that. The second way, of course, is that those of you who are in Denmark, and you're used to mobile pay, later on throughout all the rest of the announcements, all these numbers will be found at the bottom of your screen. But just uh, for the sake uh, to mention, and that is uh, the regular tithes and offerings uh, are always going to this number called 97197. And those of you who want to specifically pay your missions pledges, that goes to 222-233. Last but not least, for those of you still paying up your New Year's pledge, that will be going to 6228-98. And of course, last but not least, in case you're the only means of you to be able to uh, fulfill your pledges and your tithe and your offerings is through bank transfer, then of course you can go onto our homepage because there you will also have our bank number. And in case you think, I'm going to forget these numbers, while the announcements, announcements are going on, uh, if you have a screen that you're watching, you can always take your mobile phone and take a quick picture so you can remember these numbers. All right? There are many ways in which you can go on to. And again, let me remind you, um, we are not... Uh, uh, um, asking for donations. That's not what we do in church. We are asking you to be faithful to your commitments to the Lord and your worship to Him. It's very important to know the difference. God, can, uh, God doesn't beg us and neither does the church. But uh, just be faithful in your commitments and fulfillments. Now, I am going to take a little bit of time, just a few moments to make uh, my own uh, payment or my, my offerings. And in the meantime, Ulf will be playing a short uh, video concerning the credit card use, and then I'll continue again. Thank you. Credit card offering in ICC is easy. Go to the address bit.ly slash ICC offering in your browser, and you will see this page. First, you choose the amount you want to pay. Secondly, you choose the designation. You can write your CPR number, ICC account number, or full name. You can write a comment if you want that, and then you click Next. Then you are asked for your first name, your last name, and your email address. And then you click Next, and you put in your card number and all the other details, the same way as if you were just shopping on Amazon.com. Lastly, you press the green button to confirm the donation. After a few seconds, you will be taken to this page where it says thank you very much for your donation. This could not be easier. And always, if you have any questions, please contact us on info at getintouch.dk. Thank you, uh, everybody, for your worship. And now we go on to the announcements. I want to continue to let you know that uh, for those of you uh, who are uh, using um, your credit card to make payments, of course, you're aware that we do have um, online payment sites. Uh, it's, it's also mobile, and as a matter of fact. So we just thank God for that opportunity and option. And if you need more information, of course, you can go on to our homepage, which is getintouch.dk. The next announcement I would like to make is that uh, we would like to remind everybody who are part of our missions, pledge uh, commitments to our missionaries. Um, of course, some of them uh, need support more than ever before. And those whom we are supporting naturally is uh, Joshua, who is in Accra, in Ghana. Uh, we are in touch with him. As a matter of fact, uh, they also have started a 24-hour prayer in their church. And we are about to try and figure out how we could synchronize ICC's 24-hour prayer with them so that we have people praying around the clock. I'll try to get in touch with others as well and try and see whether we can make this happen. It's just wonderful to know that in this inter international community, we can have a real-time 24-hour prayer clock. For those of you who are not aware, we do have it in ICC. I'll talk about that later. And of course, we have Ezra in Kota Kinabalu, which is in East Malaysia. Um, 
tough times for them and uh, continue to remember that we would like to fulfill our pledges to them as well. Carl and Dernay, as I mentioned to you, in Prague, in Czech Republic, uh, continue to pray for them at a point in time like this and his family because they really need our prayers and support. Arasu, who is based in Holland but helping the pro project in Uganda, uh, literally building, literally building buildings. Uh, the school is expanding, and we thank God for that. Uh, orphans, really, all literally orphans that are being helped, and that's really awesome. Last but not least, David Zadok in Jerusalem, in Israel. Sometimes he's also watching us when the timing is right for him uh, in his country, and uh, he, we are thankful that uh, this actually, this congregation, just for your information, is the first Messianic Jewish congregation uh, in Jerusalem uh, after the coming back to the land. And uh, recently, thank God that they have got permission to use uh, the plot of uh, land where they put up a building, an official uh, challenge, which has been going on for a long time. We are thankful that we can sow seeds into this ministry as well. Now, um, for those of you uh, who would like to be involved in some of the activities that's going on in the congregation, in times past, you could, we could do this live when you are here, but naturally all the forms uh, that we have are online. So therefore, if you would like to be a part of, you know, being a part of the missions that we are blessing all our different missionaries, please go to our homepage on getintouch.dk where you'll find the online forms for missions. Plus, I just mentioned to you earlier on about prayer, remember? Um, we have a 24 hours uh, prayer and uh, prayer calendar as well as a seven days a week fasting calendar where we encourage people to spend an hour a day, if at all possible, in prayer or at least uh, uh, a meal a day in the week where you could fast. And uh, you could, of course, sign up. Then we can put it all together in a larger calendar so that we can try to ensure that this is going on. For the time being, we do have it going on. And like I said, we'd like to synchronize this with other churches and other people around the world. And you can do this no matter where you are in the world. And uh, in case you've not yet uh, made a New Year's pledge, we do that once a year. You're very much welcome to be a part of it. We have already started using the New Year's pledge for benevolence and helping other needy people. And of course, if you are in Denmark and you'd like to be a member of the congregation, sure, you could do that as well. And the membership forms are in the congregation, uh, in, the, in the online. Um, some of you who have visited us uh, live in person and you'd signed a, mem a, a visitor's form, that's not a membership form. It's just you know the fact that you're a visitor and we wanted to send you some emails about our week weekly activities. But if you'd like to be a member, an official member, you're very much welcome. The guidelines are on, online and you can, of course, do that. Uh, last but not least, I think it's probably the most important. Our weekly newsletters, uh, do sign up for them. How? Go on to our homepage. It says weekly newsletter. You've got to insert your email address and press send, and then you get a confirmation that uh, you want this. And then you, on a weekly basis, we will send out to you information, especially in a time like this. It is so necessary to stay in touch. Now, next Wednesday, or I should say coming Wednesday, we're talking about the 22nd of April. In ICC, we have our midweek service, which will also be broadcasted online. And this time, we are moving on in our school for practical Christianity, where we'll be moving to the next phase, which is the last phase, phase three, in school for Christian, uh, practical Christianity. We'll be doing module one uh, and lesson one. And the the, these five lessons that are on, uh, that's going to be ongoing is on the fivefold ministry. Naturally, we start with the apostle. What is an apostle? Is it a title? Is it a function? What are they supposed to do? Where do we find it in the scriptures? And all these questions are going to be taken in that particular uh, lesson. And last but not least, I think uh, we've mentioned this before. Please sign up for our newsletters so that you can be updated. On, if you're not a part of ICC's uh, Facebook, do uh, like us. And as a matter of fact, share. If you find that these uh, services are a blessing. Earlier on, I was talking to Victoria. And Victoria was mentioning to me that uh, she, as she has been in conversation with different people, it seems not everybody has this possibility to, or at least the equipment or the, the way in which we are doing the services. And we thank God that we can be a blessing to whoever or wherever they are. Therefore, 
um, do like us and share, invite others to, to like the ICC's uh, Facebook. I think we're very close to 1,500 uh, uh, people who are joining the Facebook, which is wonderful. That we can be a blessing while we are situated in Denmark around the world. And of course, those of you who are not aware, we do have an ICC YouTube uh, channel. We're going to put a bit more um, work on it. Right now, it's just functional. It's not yet uh, dynamic. But in future, uh, we, are, we might be broadcasting, while we are broadcasting here on Facebook, we may also be broadcasting it live in uh, uh, YouTube as well, so that we can reach a uh, broader audience, both in Denmark as well as around the world. And of course, all other information is in our homepage, which is getintouch.dk. Amen. So therefore, why get in touch? That's because our vision in ICC is that we want you to get in touch with God, with others around you, as well as with the divine destiny that God has called you for. And with that, I'm going to say the benediction and ask the Lord's blessing over you. And thank you once again to Victoria uh, for the wonderful word. Thank you, Ayumi, for that beautiful, beautiful praise and worship. And thank you, a recording a crew, for helping us to put this all together. And we ask the Lord's blessing over each and every one of you. So join me, please, as we close in benediction with a word of prayer. The Lord bless you. And the Lord keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. The Lord lift up his countenance and give you peace. Shalom. God bless you. See you on Wednesday. Bye.